Now, grown-ups, this is very important that I talk to you now. Um, so if any of you children are watching and you haven't got your grown-up with you, can you just call them quickly, please? Because the story I'm going to read from the Dragons of Kilve is about one of the dragons, Old Pumice, the old wingless dragon, who, because she's old and uh, very ill, she dies in this story, but Treasure learns to come to terms with it. So if you think this story would make you too sad or it isn't suitable for your children, can you please turn off now? It's not a long story and it does end happily. So this story is called Flying the West Wind. One autumn day, Pumice wanted to tidy her cave, but she ached all over. At last she crawled onto her nest and closed her eyes. She just wanted to sleep. That evening, when Treasure returned home with a small shark that Igneous had caught, she found Pumice shivering. Treasure lit a fire and tried to coax Pumice to eat. Then piling dried seaweed over her friend, she curled up next to her to sleep. In the morning, Pumice didn't speak or move. Her dragon fire was out. Distraught, Treasure ran through wind and rain looking for the dragon master, but all the caves were empty and everyone was out fishing. Frightened and exhausted, Treasure went home at last, but her cave was chilly, dark, and very still. Treasure sat down next to Pumice and cried. She felt so lost and alone. She didn't hear the Dragon Master step quietly into the cave. She only felt his warm hand stroking her head gently. Sniffing loudly, she hugged him and sobbed. I heard you calling, he said. I came as soon as I could. Together they knelt next to Pumice. She was very cold. Look, her dragon fire has gone out, Treasure said, softly touching her friend's nostrils. Light it again for her dragon master. She needs her warmth. She's so old and tired. The dragon master wiped away a tear and in a choking sort of voice he whispered, Indeed, little one, her dragon fire has gone out. It will never burn again. She is dead. Treasure gripped his hand in her claws. Couldn't the west wind make her alive, she begged, please. The dragon master smiled a little and hugged his treasure. Then she'd feel ill and old again. It is time for her aches and pains to be over. But won't she ache worse without dragon fire? The dragon master kissed Treasure's nose. No, for now she's with the west wind and flying like she's never flown before. We'll talk about it later, but right now I can hear the other dragons returning. They'll want to weep with you. Crying is good. Pour your grief out. Hummus's funeral was sad and beautiful. Her body had been taken to lie on the seashore. The dragons decorated her with shells and ribbons of seaweed in twisting patterns up and down her grey-blue sides. They gathered around her in the great circle and sang songs of the winds and sea. Then each dragon took turns to talk about kind things that Pumice had done or to share a special memory. And when they had finished, there was silence. It's you now, Flamethrower gently nudged Treasure forwards. Too scared to speak and her throat aching with crying, Treasure simply hugged her friend. Dear old Pumice, who had loved her and looked after her when some of the others had said she'd be useless. Thank you, she whispered in the old dragon's ear. I don't think I ever told you I love you. I hope you knew. Then she kissed the kind, tired face. I don't want you to hurt or ache any more. Goodbye. Fly well. 
With that, the dragon master said very softly, Now we shall give her back to the fire and wind that gave her birth. And the dragons raised their winds and breathed glowing flames that caressed and warmed the old dragon's bones for the last time. When the funeral was over, Flamethrower took Treasure back to his cave and offered her supper, but she couldn't eat. Silently, she lay down near the fire and closed her stinging eyes. When the night was quite dark, something woke her. It was the Dragon Master whispering, Treasure, come with me, we must go flying together. Thinking she was dreaming, Treasure followed him down to the beach where the west wind was playing all around them. Harder and harder it blew until the friends were swept off their feet. Treasure squealed, but the dragon master hugged her. Don't be afraid. The west wind has something to show us. Before Treasure could ask what he meant, the wind roared even more loudly, tossing them up into the night. On, on, it chased cradled and buffeted the travellers, rolling and spinning them high amongst the trillions of piercing, icy stars. Treasure, who usually hated flying, felt no fear. At last the darkness softened and gave way to a different sort of dawn with a light that felt alive. And there Treasure floated bathed in the kindly brightness. Quiet, safe, no pain, no grief. And the light filled her with tingling excitement and energy. Treasure leapt up, laughing like a hatchling, dizzy with her first flight. Filled with joy, she could go anywhere, do anything. She was in the wind and it was in her. She didn't understand how and she didn't care. And then just as suddenly, her dancing stopped. There was pumice. She was flying with magnificent silver wings that arched triumphantly above her head and as her shimmering green-blue body snaked through the air, this was the real pumice, no longer grey and crumpled with pain. Treasure gasped and felt herself falling. Sweeping close, Pumice laughed and nudged Treasure aloft. Fly, little one, don't be afraid. And Treasure flew in the laughing wind. Treasure did not remember returning to her cave, but the Dragon Master took her home and tucked her up safely. When she woke, she had a good breakfast and went for a swim. As she rolled in the waves, wondering if her flight had been a dream, she saw the dragon master waving at her. She splashed ashore to meet him. They walked a while. They sat on a cliff top and looked down across Kilve Bay. I'm glad you took me with you last night, Treasure said. I'm very sad that Pumice is dead. I've still got lots of crying to do. But now I've flown with the west wind. I understand. There's nothing to be frightened of, is there? No, little one, all is well. Then the dragon master put his arm around her. I'm glad you came. I feel better now too. Then the friends squeezed hand and claw and sat silently watching the waves for a very long time.